So, I'm streaming ground forces with Origin, and I'm in the Flak 36, 37 millimeter mobile anti-aircraft half-track, and I've just nailed myself a Stuka. And I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. And then I spot another one. Fresh clipper, 37 millimeter loaded. Look at that rate of fire. Look at that speed of reload. Chew on that one, Fritz. Yeah, then I get another one. How many kills you got, Origin? And then he shoots down a Stuka with a tank destroyer. <laughs> He's just showing off now, isn't he? Nobody likes a smart ass. Howdy folks, welcome back to the War Thunder Ground Forces test server with the mighty Jingles, and today it's all about the realistic battles. They're not without their own moments of comedy, however. Um, as you're about to see, as I spawn into this battle on the live stream with Origin. Oh War Thunder, you so silly. Must admit, I didn't see the funny side at the time. <laughs> The live stream audience did, though. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do when you're stuck in a tank like this. I was about to quit out. Because you can't write yourself. But hang on a minute. I'm platooned up with Origin in his SU-122. Hey, check that out. Field mechanic. And I should be able to get myself free from here. Hey. <laughs> See that? Teamwork. And this is realistic battles. Now, there are a host of minor differences between arcade and realistic, but the big difference, the one that everybody notices straight away, is that you don't get any aiming assistance whatsoever when you're in realistic battles. You have to estimate the range to your target yourself, you have to adjust your fire for shell drop over distance yourself, but as you can see, even without using the sights, I've had enough practice at it now that I'm consistently hitting my targets even without using the sights, just by using Kentucky windage and manually estimating the range. But most of these shots are ineffective. I'm not damaging. So I pull up the sights and you can see why most of those shots were ineffective. But you can also see that if you can guess the range, you can use the information on the scope to get the range to the target and get very, very accurate shots. And my next shot sets him on fire, cooks his ammo off, and unfortunately, he rage quits, wrecks his own vehicle, so I don't get a kill. Now, while I'm shooting at the Panzer IV that's just popped up behind him, um, and I think I get an assist on this guy. Yeah, there we go. That whole thing is something that I really do think they're going to have to address in War Thunder, because, you know, we worked hard to kill that guy. He was in good cover, and not one of us got a kill or even an assist out of it because he destroyed his own vehicle by quitting. And yet, at the same time, you can sympathise with people who do that because when your machine is immobilised, you've got four different tanks shooting at you, you all, all of your crew are dead. You can't return fire and defend yourself because your gun's been knocked out and your ammo rack's damaged sitting there waiting for them to finish you off is not fun. So you can completely understand why somebody would just say, oh, screw this, I'm stuffed, there's nothing else I can do, and jump into another vehicle. You get one respawn, two lives in realistic battles. So you can completely understand in those circumstances why somebody would do it. But what it's doing is robbing the guys who defeated you. Oh, look at that stug burn! 
Oh, look at that was awesome. Oh, the, you really do get a feeling of being there when you're playing War Thunder. It is fantastic. But yes, going back to my original point, all they have to do is make your vehicle persistent. If you leave a vehicle when it's still not 100% completely knocked out, then just make it persistent. Make it stay on the battlefield for 30 seconds after you've quit the vehicle. And then, you know, if the guy's shooting at you, you need more than 30 seconds to kill you. At that point, well, they don't deserve the kill. Um, and then everybody's happy. You're not forced to sit there taking damage, unable to return fire. And the guys who have defeated you get credit for the kill or the assist. Everybody's Meanwhile, sometime later, I'm in another realistic battle. I'm in the uh, 1941, the first version of the T-34. This is, I think this is the very first game that I played in it. It's completely stock. I don't have any upgrades on it whatsoever. I don't even have spare parts, so if it gets damaged, I can't repair it. Sitting here on this corner with a KV-1, at least three enemy tanks in front of us. They're calling in an artillery barrage. We backed off just in the nick of time and I'm not going around that corner <laughs> not with Panzer fours and Stugs just waiting um, and the artillery barrage only has something like a 30 second cooldown so that would just be stupid instead I'm gonna go up around and get onto the high ground and see if I can get some shots down on them I really do like the T-34 you know the armour really does work. Not all the time, but often enough. And that's when I spot a panzer sneaking around up there. And I'm not entirely sure he's seen me. So, check my flank. Well, actually, I think he has seen me. Or if he hasn't, he's going to get a very nasty surprise. There he is. It's Panzer 3L. Angle the armour. He's trying to get his gun down. He's on fire, he's burning, he's taking damage. He hits me in the side at that angle. He does no damage whatsoever. I think he might be firing high explosive. He's still burning. Oh, there goes the turret. <laughs> like a champagne cork. And oh shit, they've called in Artie on me and I'm taking fire from the flank. God damn it, get up this hill. Crap. Oh, I took a hit there. It didn't appear to do any damage, though. That T-34 armor. T-34. Very strong tank. Russian engineering. Best in the world. <laughs> and in before people start crying Russian bias. You saw the video I put up yesterday. We're kicking ass in tigers and panthers. Now, one of the things that I have noticed, and this was probably my single biggest fear about War Thunder Ground Forces, particularly in realistic and simulator battles, because this is more realistic, because you can often get your tank knocked out in one shot, I was really, really afraid that it was going to make people just camp hard. Particularly in realistic and simulator, because your shooting is so much more inaccurate, because you don't get any aiming assistance. And yet, what actually appears to be happening is that people are playing very aggressively. Oh dear. Mm, yeah, I am stuck. <laughs> this was quite funny. While I'm waiting for a very, very brave teammate, completely random teammate, by the way, who just, here he is. Krieghauser, oh God, it's some German name, I can't pronounce it. He's in an SU-122, and he's going to come over to my assistance, but while there he is, what a superstar. Unfortunately, it's not quite going to work out the way we'd both hoped. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Um, well, yeah, what I'm finding is actually happening is that because it's very difficult to correctly estimate the range and adjust your fire at long range in realistic and particularly in simulator that what is actually happening is the reverse of camping people are closing to short range where they can make certain of their shots and it's just as fast paced and exciting in realistic 
not quite so much in Simulator, but it's certainly not boring in Simulator. But it's just as fast-paced and realistic as it is in Arcade. So, oh, not quite sure what happened to the video there. Sorry about the colour. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm trying to yell out to <laughs> my friend in the SU-122 there. Oh, watch out, they're behind us. But he's determined to get me free. If you come round the other side, that's it. Yeah, push me from that side. But you, you know, watch out for those tanks, <laughs> because they are you know, likely to start shooting at us. Um, that sounded a bit close. Oh shit! Oh shit! They've called in artillery on us. This is not going to end well. Go on, save yourself. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> oh, what have I done? I totally got that guy killed. Thank you, however, for, you know, making the attempt. Brave and pointless though it was. <laughs> I was going to make a comment about the kindness of random strangers, but there was really nothing random about them. These guys were all watching the stream and trying to make sure they jumped into the same vehicles as us. Uh, to end up on the same team, and it, and it was working out for them a lot of the time. We kept seeing a lot of the same people. Well, great guys to play with. Now, this here, spot the silhouette of a tank, and I put a shot in, and it goes right through and out the other side. That is a knocked out tank. Tanks will stay on the battlefield after they have been destroyed, in realistic, but your shots will go right through them. You cannot use them as cover learn that one the hard way and it's always wise especially when you can't really see I mean you will notice a burned out tank quite easily but when the light is behind them and all you can see is the silhouette just put a shot into them better safe than sorry you've got plenty of ammunition you've only got one tank right Origins just caught up with me he's in the uh, clown camo on his T-34 he even paints eyes on the front of his turret. Look at that. He's such a dork. <laughs> um, we've made it around. There's a whole bunch of us come around here into the enemy spawn again. We've got a uh, flyby guy up there also in the T-34. Again, he's another guy we kept running into a lot, particularly in the simulator battles, which I'll show you in another video. Now, I don't know if you remember watching the arcade battles that we played in the Tigers and the Panthers with the Angry Joe Show Army's livestream. But we're moving up in a more or less the same position where we got a very nasty surprise by not quite realising that we were in the enemy spawn and the enemy team spawned behind us and just killed us. And bang, right there, somebody just respawned and he's got two T-34s right in front of him. And he's about to have a very, very bad day. Boom, kill secured. There's my first kill. Then a wild stug appears. And he's about to have a very, very bad day. He's got Couch Potato behind us with a 25mm auto cannon in the flak truck shooting him up. He's got flyby guys shooting from the left and me in front of him. And I'm trying to use standard World of Tanks tactics and get around him, but he's just too fast, so I end up having to do it the hard way. And there's my second kill. Two kills in Realistic. Who the hell are you and what have you done with the real jingles? And I must stress to point out that this is only the first day that I've been playing realistic battles and at first I mean I was bad I was really bad but it does not take long as you can see the evidence right now I played one session with the Angry Joe Show Army and this was quite early on in the second session on the same day the first day playing realistic battles with Origin and I'm I'm doing all right now, there's a Panzer 3F over. Oh shit. Another Panzer 3 just spawned right behind Flyby Guy's T 34 and took him out. Again, you know, don't forget, you're right next to the enemy spawn point. Or one of the two enemy spawn points. Okay. Um, well, vengeance. T 34 versus Panzer 3. Seems like a fair fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not alone, because Origin has come racing over to get vengeance as well. I didn't even realise he was up there, but I'll take advantage of that, because while the Panzer III 
is busy putting fire into Origin and wrecking his tank. Yeah, he's not shooting at me, so yeah, happy with that. <laughs> and kill secured, three kills. Remember, it's not kill stealing, it's teamwork. <laughs> So we're cruising around the air, I mean we're spawn camping basically, but the enemy team do have two spawn points and if they know we're here, it's up to them to come and kill us. Uh, you know, they, they are welcome to spawn at the other spawn point, they don't have to keep choosing this one. And bang, and there they go, somebody's come back to try to get us out of their spawn. It's another Panzer three, And I get a shot in and ooh, ooh, that, well I did some serious damage to him. He got a good hit in on me before I could straighten the armor angle out, and I'm now immobilized. But my gun is still in action. And Origin comes steaming in. Now, he said he was coming to the rescue, but I know he was trying to steal the kill. <laughs> Not today, Origin. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> so there's four kills. Um, well, my tank's wrecked, but it can still shoot. So, there's that. Well, and he chose to respawn up there. He knows there's two of us here. Fair enough. <laughs> and Origin was cursing. He's like, will you let me kill something? <laughs> this was so funny. You really needed to see this live. Now this Panzer III has done exactly the right thing. And surely I am dead. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Origin rams him and sets himself on fire. <laughs> and then I get the kill anyway. <laughs> I was It's a good job. There were no more enemy tanks for the next minute or so. <laughs> because I was laughing so hard I wouldn't have been able to defend myself. <laughs> oh man, you really should have seen the live stream. It was so funny. But if you've been paying attention, look at the top of the screen. They control two bases. Look at our ticket counter going down. Now I'm stuck here immobilised waiting to be repaired and while we were derping around here farming kills in the spawn point the rest of the team were actually you know taking it seriously <laughs> and they basically won this game for us right at this point origin was saying have you seen the scores i'm like i don't care I'm, I'm having too much fun i don't really care if we lose this game but the team what a bunch it really, really was a great team. And most of the guys on our team were guys from the stream. And it was just such, such a fun live stream with a great bunch of people jumping into the games with us. And there you go. I'm, I'm sitting here. I mean, I've scored six kills in Realistic, which I was really, really happy about. Because let's not forget, I'd never played Realistic until that day. And just a couple of hours before, on the Angry Joe Show stream, when I was playing my first realistic battles I had no idea and you know you'll probably find it is a bit of a of an adjustment coming from arcade do yourself a favor when you're in arcade and you do have oh origin got a kill hooray no no origin got killed <laughs> this yeah this game just was not his moment to shine but yes, when you are playing arcade and you're thinking about going into realistic battles, just when you have that armor penetration indicator and that bullet drop indicator that, that tells you how much you need to raise your sights to hit a tank at long ranges, pay attention. Pay attention to how high you have to raise your barrel to get the shots in. Because that will help you when you come into realistic battles. Or, alternatively, you can just do what I did and learn the hard way. And it really does not take long. This is a six-kill realistic battle in War Thunder Ground Forces on the first day that I started playing realistic battles. 
it is just so incredibly accessible. Oh, and there you go. Flyby guy nailing the last enemy tank and finishing the game with his eighth kill. There's always somebody's got to go one better, isn't there? <laughs> Actually, it was two better jingles. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Nobody likes the smart arse. <laughs> that was so much fun. And when I first jumped into Realistic Battles, earlier the same day, and I was like, how the hell am I supposed to hit them at, at long range when I... It's not... Well, you have to estimate the range to the target and adjust your fire accordingly. You have to what? <laughs> Just... How am I supposed to do yeah, it? It's really not hard. It does not take long at all to get the hang of it. And once you've done that, you've basically mastered realistic battles. Everything from there on in is just tactics and knowing your tanks. Um, the next step up, of course, is simulator battles. And we'll be covering simulator battles in the next video. Because yes, we did play some simulator battles as well. Yes, I was utterly terrible, but I wasn't as bad in my first simulator battle as I had been in my first realistic battle. When you look at the relative popularity of the various different game modes in War Thunder aircraft, the figures are something like 95% play arcade, with 4% playing realistic and only 1% playing simulator. I genuinely don't think those numbers are going to be the same in War Thunder tanks, because the realistic battles, as hopefully I've shown in this video are so easy to get into and really don't take that much practice to get the hang of. And the simulator battles are also a hell of a lot more easy to get into than the aircraft simulator battles. And that is going to be the subject of the next video. I have played some simulator battles. I was terrible in them, but I wasn't nearly as bad as I expected to be. Coming up in the next War Thunder Ground Forces video from Origins livestream. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and perhaps if you've been afraid that realistic battles in War Thunder Ground Forces were going to be far too hardcore for you to be able to get into, um, well I certainly hope you've had your fears laid to rest as you can see if a, if a noob like me can get six kills on the first day that he starts playing realistic battles in War Thunder tanks, absolutely anything's possible. Take care folks, I'll catch you next time.